Hello everybody, this is the second video about poor HEPCAC. Uh, in the previous video I talked about problem and observation. Um, today I'm going to talk about research and hypothesis. And then in future videos I will talk about experiment and procedure, collecting data, analyzing data, and writing a conclusion. So, in the big scheme of things, we have so far talked about P and O. Today we're going to talk about R and H. But I already have a word written here that I did not mention about O that also is important about R. Observations and research both need to be relevant, meaning don't do an observation or don't do research that has nothing to do with the problem. An example is actually given about this in the research section of your handout. In it, it says, research is important. You must have this in order to write a hypothesis. Do research about the situation, but don't research about things on the outside, meaning only research relevant topics about the problem. For instance, in a boiling and freezing soda lab, you would not research who found Coca-Cola. No, you're not going to research who invented it. You're not going to research where the bottling plants are, because Coca-Cola is bottled in many different places, but that doesn't dif that Coca-Cola is the same around the world. That's why it's Coca-Cola. Everybody around the world knows what Coca-Cola tastes like. Um, that has nothing to do with what we're trying to do, which is determining boiling and freezing points. So what you should investigate is ingredients, how it's made, and information about freezing and boiling. If it doesn't have anything to do with it, then don't research it and don't make observations about it. The next step of poor HEPCAC, or scientific method, is writing a hypothesis. Your paper says this is where you use your research, and I'll add, or your observation, to make a guess about what you think will happen. You should make a numerical guess. So you've already written a bunch of research and made some observations, so now you can write a hypothesis. But here's how you do that. And we have a, just a general way of saying it, but then we have an example. The way, the way to write a hypothesis is to say if observation or research, then what do you think will happen? But I want to get a little bit more in detail, and please write this in your notebook on your assigned page. What you're going to do is you're going to say, if, based on an observation you have, some prior knowledge, or something you have just gotten from your five senses, or some research you've done, then here's what I think will happen. But you can't just have some kind of guess. Um, we use educated guess, but a hypothesis is not just a guess. It's something based on your observations and your research, and then it is typically a number. You're going to say, I think it's going to go up. I think it's going to stay the same. I think it's going to go down. You're typically not going to get specific about the number, but you can at least say, I think it's going to go up, I think it's going to stay the same, I think it's going to go down. And it has to be something, obviously, going back to problem that can be tested and measured in a numerical fashion. So the example here, going back to research, saying that Coca-Cola and we're doing something with boiling freezing point, well, if solutes cause boiling points to rise and melting points to lower, then Coca-Cola's boiling point will be this, and boy, the freezing point will be this. 
Well, since Coca-Cola is mainly water, you may say you think it's going up. You think it's going down. It's got to be a guess, a number, or you've got to say it's going up or down. One thing, as I've been talking, I realized I did not say, and let's back up just very quickly to research. Now, in this year, and um, in the age that we live, research can now basically be done with one word, Google. Google it. Google the idea, the problem we're talking about. You're probably going to find somebody that's done research similar to, if not, the question you're answering. Doesn't mean you don't need to do the rest of the scientific method. It just means you found something that somebody has already said about it. So that's research and hypothesis. I haven't written a whole lot, but make sure you get something in your notebook. And we will continue in class. And the next video will be about experiment and procedure. Thank you very much.